in this topic and in the further few topics we will be discussing about international industrial relations uh, you know that industrial relations is a aspect of human resource management uh, but as other aspects of human resource management such as selection and recruitment training and development performance management or compensation these are aspects of micromanagement management of uh, aspects that relate to individuals working within the organization and the organization manages it within itself whereas industrial relations is a macro level aspect in which all the aspects of the economy of the context of the surrounding as well as the direct implications from the environment that come from uh, the uh, associations of employees that are called trade unions that directly affects the organization so organization is not on its own in taking its decisions about what they what the policy or strategy will be about the industrial relation rather it is directed and guided by the external forces what kind of trade unions are existing in the economy are existing in that particular country what type of regulations are existing in that country how these uh, trade unions are um, they create a political pressure how strong they are what type of culture there is all these things they uh, they create a pressure on the organization and therefore it is something which is not the prerogative or it is not the entire on the it is not on the entire um uh, discretion of the organization that they can take the decision how they will react to the inter, uh, to these trade unions these organizations they have to take into account what is how the external pressure is created from the uh, trade unions on the organization and it becomes even more complicated in the international scenario because as the organization moves from one country to the other country they need to understand the industrial relation dynamics of each country they need to understand all the aspects that i have just mentioned about what type of pressures the trade unions can create and how to react to these kind of pressures which are kind of they are not structured these pressures they are not measurable they cannot be um they cannot be calculated in terms of uh, finances they are uh, matters of judgment uh, by the top management of the organization how to deal and usually that results in kind of conflicts you know when trade unions they go on strikes uh, for the rights of the labor and the employees that creates a kind of crisis so that includes a lot of crisis management as well as conflict management uh and and because it is a situation which which can emerge at any time uh that is something which the organization needs to manage at the macro level so it is a complicated aspect of the human resource management not very much straightforward as uh, you know performance management it can be uh it can, you can relate it with the performance criteria and then measure it and then you can relate the rewards with it no it is something which is complicated with in, which involves a lot of external pressures and the environment uh, has to be taken into account uh so let's see that um, uh what is industrial uh, relations and how in various different countries what type of trade unions exist and uh what is the basic um, uh, you know introduction to that uh so why do we call it industrial relations uh industrial relations is kind of a traditional term which was um, used uh, more frequently in the previous academic literature now uh, the terms which are used for industrial relations have moved towards more modern um, uh, words which are uh sometimes they are called employee relations sometimes they are called employment relations because now the um the employment or the employee is 
considered to be at the forefront. Uh, that is why the industrial relation term has faded off and employee relation or employment relation or collective bargaining terms, they are more used in the academic literature. However, we will still be using industrial relations. Why? Because it is consistent with the international organizations. Uh, um, so the term of industrial relations is still a, it is still used by uh, organizations which are operating internationally to uh, make sure that the employees, they get the proper rights that they, uh, uh, and these are the organizations which work for the rights of the employees. And therefore, because we are talking in the international context, we are not talking on the domestic context or the local context. So therefore, we will not be uh, using the term um, employee relations or employment relations. We are going to use the term industrial relation because that is the term which is used by the international, which is still used by the international organizations. More, uh, uh, one of the uh, very important inter international organizations working for the rights of employees is international labor organizations. You know that it is working under the umbrella of United Nations. They have their office in Geneva, their headquarters in Geneva, and they work for the rights of uh, employees. And they have done a lot of work on making sure that uh, employees, they get proper rights, they get uh, uh, equal opportunities, they get proper working conditions, and they keep on working for the rights of employees. And it is a big pressure on the organizations to make sure that employees, they get proper uh, working conditions and are compensated well for their work and for their efforts. Uh, then another very important organization which is working uh, globally, internationally, is the International Organization of uh, Employers. And that is the organization which is, uh, uh, which is working uh, for the private organizations and uh, they are collaborating they, with the International Labor Organization as well. And one of the most uh, significant contributors to, to the International Labor Organization and they are a, an association of private organizations and uh, uh, about 100, more than 150 organizations are associated with this and they work for the rights of employees in the private sector. Um, in international uh, industrial relations, we need to see that, well, there are different types of uh, trade unions and collective bargaining agents that work in various different countries. And international, uh, industrial relations, uh, they vary significantly across borders. And uh, there are different types of trade unions which uh, uh, look after the rights of employees. And the type of trade union that actually affects how the uh, pressure will be built on the organizations who, for whom the pressure is going to be built depends on the type of trade union. Um, uh, so the type of trade unions that are working in various different countries, uh, you see that industrial unions, uh, they are usually prevalent in Germany and in most of the Europe, and it includes all grades of employees. So uh, industrial unions, they are uh, association of employees from a particular industry. And all type of employees of that industry, they are allowed to take part in it and be a member of these, associa uh, of, of these associations. Uh, then in, uh, there are uh, craft unions which are prevalent in Europe, Australia, and the US. And these are skilled occupational groupings across industries. So it is possible that in one industry, uh, there are many different people with a specific kind of skill. Uh, these are the type of trade unions which uh, started, which were the first ones to exist in the history. Uh, they were called guilds uh, in the UK. And uh, the people from the same kind of craft, for example, um, if a painter um, is uh, working in an in industry, but that painter has got a particular skill, so all painters will have a guild. And these guilds were then converted into craft unions. And these craft unions are, they, um, uh, they allow membership 
of people that that belong to the same craft so um, a person could be working in the for example construction in, uh, industry uh, but there are many different kind of skilled workers in the construction um, industry so there are painters and there are builders and there are uh, you know um, woodworks men so all these people have got different kind of skills so crafts unions are for employees or people who are working under a particular craft and these are called craft unions so these are more prevalent in europe australia and us uh, then there are conglomerate unions in the us canada and netherlands they represent members in more than one industry so conglomerates you know are big multinationals which work in various industries for example you know unilever is a conglomerate which is working in various different industries it is working in the M fmcgs it is working uh, in um, other sectors of uh, the economy as well so uh, they these are the um, uh, organizations which are working on various different uh, levels then there are general unions they are prevalent in austria and europe and they are open to almost all employees in a given country so these unions they exist in a particular country and they are allowed to be open for all types of employees for example american federation of labor is a general union which is uh, which represents the rights of employees of uh, america and it allows membership from all types of employees and from all types of industries and then finally there are enterprise unions they are increasingly evident in the industrialized nations and enterprise unions they are regard as the word says itself it is about one particular em enterprise so uh, this was most prevalent in japan uh, japan uh, has a culture of collective bargaining uh, with only one organization's union so in japan usually unions are in one particular organization so agar koi bhi organization hai to uski apni ek union hogi aur us wohi union jo hai wo aapki organization se bargain karegi rather than a collective association ho jo ke mukhtalif organizations ko deal kare enterprise union jo hai wo ek hi organization ke employees ki membership uske andar hoti hai aur ye jo enterprise unions hain ye ek hi organization ke employees ke liye kaam karte hain so enterprise unions they are more prevalent in japan and uh, they work for the rights of employee of one organization so these are the different types of trade unions which are prevalent in various areas of the world and the organizations which are working internationally they must know that when they go to a particular country they should know what type of uh, unions are existing in that particular country and how they are going to deal with that particular type of trade union